and researchers and uh, staff there within the Department of Food Science that work with kind of all facets of not only uh, food production, uh, but food safety, food processing, food handling, food nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so that kind of hub there. And then with all the extension offices in every county, uh, we've got staff out in those counties that, that help deliver that information that is researched um, and any new techniques and things uh, get distributed in that manner. Mm -hmm. um, so what we have now is a federal law that uh, Food Safety Modernization Act, or FSMA, or FISMA, mm -hmm. if you want to use the acronym. The old FISMA The Act. old FISMA Act, uh, which has been in place for a few years, but of course you pass the federal legislation, then they have to do all the rulemaking uh, and regulations that go along with that, so that's taken a couple years mm -hmm. and a lot of revisions, a lot of revisions. Yeah. Uh, there was a, I don't even know how much input there was, but there was a lot of input provided by various individuals and organizations across the country uh, to help shape and mold uh, what we have now as, as a set of regulations to follow. Okay. So, so then the, you go out uh, to the various organized yeah, meetings of, of food handlers in, in various areas. And primarily, the um, I've focused on the farm food safety piece of the puzzle. Okay. All right. If you are a food processor, let's say you make jam, mm -hmm. um, or whatever food you process, you take that raw commodity and you're turning it into another product, uh, a preserved con a product. A consumer product. Or, yes, get it closer to market, re market ready, mm -hmm. whether that requires um, some sort of, you know, cooking, processing, all that phase, uh, that we have another group that works more with that arena. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, of course, we've got family and consumer science educators that work on the nutrition end of everything. So kind of have a piece in all that. And this federal law also regulates not only we've added in now at the farm level, so producing that raw commodity and the steps you need to take to produce that as safely as you possibly can to minimize any potential uh, E. coli, for example, outbreaks, mm -hmm. um, E. coli, listeria, um, are a couple of those unfortunately common ones that can happen. Yeah. Uh, but And they're bacterial in nature. Yes. Okay. And then, you know, and there's other groups of organisms also that can cause issues with that raw food product that can then also affect us as humans. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we're trying to minimize the risks involved with that. So that's where the federal legislation has added that in. Um, and, and, and a lot of it is common sense things. However, we all have varying degrees of that, so we've we, we, we got to write it all down <laughs> and get it all there, and then we've got to talk about it and put it in practice. Um, and there's a lot of things that are in this that are already being done and have been done by people that produce food. Mm -hmm. uh, they just don't document it. You know, it, you know how we do things. Yeah. We learn to do things. We do things. Uh, but unless there's some need to write it down, we know we did it. We're not keeping the records. So we're not keeping the records. So a big portion of this is uh, record-keeping requirements, oh, okay. which everybody loves to do. Oh, sure. Um, paperwork. Paperwork, yeah. So that, that causes issues. Um, but we're learning how to deal with that and mm -hmm. take care of it and try to do it as efficiently as possible. It does mm -hmm. add ex cost to, to production. Sure. Um, and in some cases, we need to change some some practices of, of what we're doing that may really indeed bump up some some costs, but it just mm -hmm. depends on the situation, what we're doing. So that's that's what we're focusing on and working with the actual producers to do to go through this. Um, this certification, you know, once you go through this all-day class, you get a certificate um, through the uh, Produce Safety Alliance, PSA, uh, who was written into this law at the federal level that was responsible for developing all the materials and the training materials that are used across the country. Mm -hmm. And so a little niche of that was <clears throat> we have different people that produce food, so this one was uh, we're gearing it towards Amish and Plain folks, Mennonites, um, that 
that may not want to use, <laughs> that don't always use the same technology that other people do. So mm -hmm. we've had to adapt these materials uh, so that they're more receptive and work well yeah. and in an understandable manner for that audience. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll have to do that for some other audiences as well. Sure. Um, so you're talking things so, like, um, and not just in terms of the presentation, but for the actual uh, food handling aspect of it, um, uh, possibly refrigeration, um, uh, cooking temperatures, um, storage, so, and, and things of that nature? Yeah, more, well, not so much. We're not taking care of the cooking part. Okay. Um, we're taking care of, so you harvest that in the field. Maybe you need to cool it, though, before you package it and sell it, uh, whether it's in a farm retail market or a farmer's market or whether you wholesale that product, you may need to cool that product mm -hmm. to keep it at its best um, state until it gets to the final consumer or to the next step in the line, <clears throat> especially with the wholesale yeah. perspective because it's going to go to a warehouse and then it's going to get distributed to all the stores from there. So mm -hmm. we're worried about that from the field uh, to when it goes out the farmer's door. Yeah. And, uh, of course, when you say you add to the cost of production, then it, it ultimately it will add to the cost of the product, but it's in the name of safety, and so yes. it's certainly something that can be supported. Yeah. All right, so I'm, we got into a bit of a conversation there about all of that. But, and we but that's good. It's, a, it's important. It's yeah. something going on. It's a huge change <clears throat> in the industry um, right now to get into this. There's not every single producer is required by the law to comply with this. Okay. Uh, there are some degrees in there based on your level of sales. Mm -hmm. uh, so anybody under $25,000 in sales um, theoretically doesn't have to comply with this federal act. Oh, okay. However, the people that they sell to may question that or... Uh -huh. uh, feel that they need to be, or, you know, or ask them, are they certified or not? Because um, they have to comply. Yeah, because they might have to comply. Um, really, the the wholesale end of the market has kind of driven this for several years now because um, they've dictated if you as a producer want to sell to me, these are the things you will have to do. And essentially, they followed a lot of the things that are in the act. Yeah. Some required a higher level even than that, mm -hmm. but that's what happens in the in the real world out there hey guess what we used up the whole segment <laughs> look at that <laughs> <laughs> well about the phone this. didn't ring so we were yeah. we were on a roll we were we were there we, we were, were there. there thanks for coming across the street good luck hey. trying to get back across yeah right now it doesn't look too hard <laughs> am 1160 wccs 101.1 fm two minutes away from eight o'clock